Shut up! Ah! I'm trying to film here. Do not ask a worm its age. You're not gonna get anywhere with that conversation. It's like, how old are you? Depends on which part of me you ask. It is Annalita, segmented worms. Let's start. The last three phyla we've discussed were all worms. Hence, in terms of body plan, these guys are what we call vermiform, tubular. They are longer than they are wide. For annelids particularly, even the ones that live in terrestrial environments are actually restricted to relatively moist places. They do have a cuticle. It's sort of still permeable to gases and to water, so they can still lose water to the environment, and that kind of just makes the whole thing about keeping wet extra complicated for them. They're called annelida from the name annelus because they kind of look like small rings that are stuck together. They exhibit what we call metamerism. It's true metamerism this time, not the pseudo shit that Tanya was pulling off. That means that their body is actually divided into segments that cannot function independently. They gotta be together forever. These segments are actually divided internally by septa. Parang may kwarto sa loob. Kwarto, kwarto, kwarto. Na medyo pare-pareho yung itsura. They kind of repeat the respiratory and the excretory and the locomotory organs in each segment. But apart from the metamerism that we do see, what makes an annelid, an annelid, structures made of chitin called setae. They use that to cling onto the substrate to help them move around because they don't really have an internal rigid skeleton to give them that leverage to move. They're gonna have to use both the hydrostatic skeleton mechanism that they have and then they're gonna have to anchor their setae onto whatever substrate and then move their fluids through. In as much as you do see segmentation and then you do see the setae all throughout these different organisms, that's kind of where it stops. The rest is pretty diverse. It's pretty confusing when you see them sprawled in front of you on a table. What? These are all from the same group? Instead Instead of discussing like the typical anatomy of the group as a whole, we'll try to discuss it based on the major taxonomic groupings under this file. The phylum of segmented worms is more or less divided into two main groups. You have Polychaeta and then you have Clitoliata. In some taxonomical treatments, you might also see class Echaeura as part of this roster. However, some also subsume this class under Polychaeta. So the taxonomy of Annelids is very much still under the works. Either way, we kind of have these groups. For now. From the name poly, marame, kita, kite, cite, they have a lot of cite. They're usually situated on these lateral extensions of their body, which are called parapodia. They have parapodia, and then at the ends are like tufts of cite. The parapodia for polychaetes is fairly diverse, that you can actually use this as a basis for the identification of the many different polychaetes. Clitaliata is distinguished by the presence of a clitelium. From the word clital, it means Saddle. They kind of have that structure along the length of their body that kind of looks exactly like a saddle. If you were to ride a worm, that's probably where you're gonna sit your ass. The clitellium really, it has a reproductive function. It secretes like the cocoon for the embryos. It also secretes mucus to help facilitate the transfer of sperm because many of the members of this group are actually hermaphrodites. I'll give you my sperm if you give me your sperm kind of thing. That is facilitated by the stuff that goes on in the clitellium. And if we are to treat Echaeura as a class of its own, Echae, which means spines, Ura is tail, which means most of the CTA that you will find along the body of the worm are actually concentrated more on its butt. Spiny ass, spiny butt, pointed butt. Diba, alam niyo yung game sa birthday party, yung paunahan ipap yung balloon. Paupo niyo sa Eka Yoran, sa ipagupo niya ganun, boom, potok na agad yung balloon. <laughs> Polychaetes are mainly divided into two groups, the ones that we call the errant polychaetes, errantia, sedentary polychaetes, sedentaria. Historically, they kind of just based it on which polychaetes are the ones that move around, errant, which means mobile, and which polychaetes are the ones that kind of just stay in one place. Sedentaria, sedentary, couch potato worms. With the addition of molecular taxonomy, these things have changed. There may be members of one group that are not part of the other group. Sometimes your lifestyle really doesn't say much about who was your common ancestor back in the past. At some point, it might say a little bit, but not the complete story. And that's what scientists are finding out as they discover more about worms. Let's first focus on the typical anatomy of your errant polychaete. The head part, which has the prostomium and the peristomium. Trunk, which has all of these repeating segments. The tail, which is called the pygidium. Out of this entire body of your polychaete, there are two regions which are not segmented. Can you guess which one? Duh, it's the head part and the tail part, or the pygidium. You know, you can use your brain mode or you can use your foot mode. It's so weird, right? The older segments are the ones in the anterior part. The youngest parts of the worms are closest to its butt. They mostly rely on their parapodia for movement. They kind of use that as flippers, but if you are a sedentary polychaete, you mostly rely on the contraction of your circular muscles, push the fluid of your body along the length of your entire body, and then you use your setae to hook around. 
I, I did that last time. You get the point. That is peristaltic motion. Nerys. These are what we commonly call ragworms or clamworms because they're very much associated with clams. Not that they're best friends, but they kind of inhabit the same places. They are under order Phyllodocida. Polychaetes that have a muscular, irversible pharynx. I don't know, like, I don't know. <laughs> they kind of have a pharynx with those claws that can evert. That means it's from the inside and then it goes to the outside and like, <laughs> you have the prostomium, which contains most of the sense organs, like the eyes and some of the other sensory papillae. And then the peristomium, that's the one that contains the pharynx. While we don't really have any representatives in the laboratory, I would just like to show these to you because you will probably see them when you go snorkeling in the water from the order Sabellida. We have the Christmas tree worm from the family Serpulidae, and then we also have the feather duster worms from the family Sabellidae. From order Terabellida, under family Terabellidae, we have the spaghetti worm. What you really see here are just the structures that are more or less on top of their heads. That's all that's really exposed. The rest of the worm body is hidden underneath. They form tubes, parang pringles. Yung lata ng pringles, yung tube nila, yung bahay nila. Tapos yung pringles mismo, sila yon. nandun yung katawan nila, yung bawat stack ng pringles. Segment nila, and then they, they're kind of just in that tube. And then the thing that comes out, mainly they use this for what do you guys think? They kind of use these for feeding. Yung Christmas tree worm na katawayan, usually naka embed yan sa mga boulder corals. Kapag nila pitan mo yan, magugulat ka, bluk, magtatago agad sa loob yan. How do they know? Do these guys have fucking eyes? Well, yeah, some of them actually do. They have eyes, dun sa radios, that they can somehow sense. Kapag kami predators, that's why they hide. The members of Serpulidae, most of them have an operculum. If they want to close up in their tube, they hide their radials and they have like an actual door. <laughs> Fuck no, I'm not gonna see anybody today. Feather duster worms or the members of Sabella Day, they don't really have that. They just kind of for the members of Terabelli Day, like your spaghetti worms, they can't really retract it. So once the spaghetti is out, it's just out. It's so terrible. <laughs> Seboglinid worms. These used to belong to separate phyla, phylum vestimentifera. That was a mouthful. Sometimes you also call them the giant tube worms, and then you also have the beard worms or the poganophora. The common features that they share, that's why they're now under family Sibaglinidae. They have a cephalic lobe that has a lot of ciliated tentacles, and these tentacles are vascularized. Cephalic lobe, right here, with a lot of tentacles. They have a trunk that is not really segmented, and there are no septa inside. Why are they under the segmented worm group? Both of them have an opistosoma. Opisto means nasa dulo. That's the part that's segmented. And also, that's the part that actually has the setae. Yung puwet nila yung pangkapit nila dun sa substrate. These guys also live in tubes, and they do not have a digestive system as adults. No mouth, no anus. That is where the trophosomes come in. This trophosome has many lobes and contains a lot of chemosynthetic bacteria. They live in places that are very much rich in different types of organic matter. They use these substances to have chemosynthesis, and then they produce energy, which can also be used by the worm or the worm can just eat the bacteria. That's why they can live without a digestive system because they have the trophosome anyway with a bacteria and everything is kind of provided for them already. How do you differentiate frenulates from vestimentiferums? There are some structures that you're really not going to see unless you dissect the worm, but come on. What are the chances that you're actually going to a hydrothermal vent to go find a fucking worm? At the very least, you should know that for frenulate worms, they do not have the structures called the vestimentum and the obturaculum. For the vestimentiferans, they have that. For the vestimentiferans, they have what we call the branchial plume, the place where you find all of these tentacles for the cilia. They have a vestimentum, which is kind of just like the collar, and they have an obturaculum. You know that it's an echiurin because they have anal sacs that are connected to their anus and they're muscular, so they must have some pumping action going on. There's really a lot going on up their butt. They are not segmented as adults. Why the fuck are they annelids? The defining feature of an annelid, it's more of the setae, which they still have up their ass. It has shovel-like proboscis that just sticks out of their body and they cannot retract that. It's just out there. And that's kind of what they used to feed. That's why sometimes they're also commonly known as spoonworms. That bonilia is a female because they're very much sexually dimorphic. The males are actually just very small. They live inside the female and just serve no other purpose but to produce sperm for her. This is an example of an animal that exhibits environmental sex determination. Oh, such big words! When we develop, pag may XY ka, you're a male. Pag XX female, your sex is determined by your genetics. But for these worms, it's determined by the environment. If the larvae, which do not have a sex yet, come in contact with a female, they will become males. But if the larvae do not come in contact with a female, then they will become females. Ayan na naman tong isa. Why are they called innkeeper worms? Ano bang innkeeper? Para kang hotel manager. So ibig sabihin, marami kang guests. It actually shares its burrow with a lot of other organisms. This is also actually called a penis fish. And I'm not joking. Pause this video. I'm gonna wait for you and Google that shit. Penis fish. People actually eat this shit. 
No, it's not shit, it's a worm. In South Korea, it's actually a delicacy. Dick worm, and that's it. Innkeeper worm, penis fish, dick worm. But dick worm is not like a formal common name, not one that is recognized by the scientific community, that is just my community <laughs> with you guys. <laughs> Before, they actually used to be like separate classes until they discovered that Hirudinia, they also have the Clitellium. Well, why not just lump them all into Clitelliata? And that's exactly what they did. Oligo means few. They have few setae, at least fewer than polychaetes. They don't have the parapodia. If you look at errant polychaetes, they kind of have a face. It has eyes, it has sensory papillae, it has tentacles. But for oligochaetes, the prostomium is <laughs> this boring front thing that really doesn't have a face. And also, they do not have respiratory structures. Much of the gas exchange is facilitated by diffusion. That is why they have to live in moist environments. Our representative for Oligotina will be none other than our earthworm. Sila yung madalas ginagamit sa vermiculture. If you're into composting and all of that, the vegetable scraps, all of the food scraps that you have, they are going to eat that up and turn it into soil. Yung lupa na nakikita ninyo, actually tay-tay yan ng mga earthworm at kung ano pang mga iba't ibang mga kahayup-hayupan na kumakain ng detritus. That's what soil is. That's like invertebrate poop. Poop is very nutritious, very much bioavailable to plants, so it's easy for them to absorb all of the good stuff that the poop of these guys have. So, mataba yung halaman. Kaya nga fertilizer, tawag natin pataba. Sila yung nagpapataba sa halaman. Gawa ng kanilang Jebs. Why is Hirudinia separate from Oligokita? Most leeches do not have setae. So how do they move around? Yung put nila may suction cup. I cannot demonstrate this movement. I am not. This is so pathetic. Oh my god, no. Put the video up here. And that's kind of how they move. Mukha naman silang segmented sa labas. The segmentation outside does not reflect segmentation inside. If you actually cut them open, their body is not really divided internally. Leeches. Some popular genera would be Hirudo or Hirudinaria. Iba siya dun sa slugs. Slugs are actually mollusks, so they are not leeches. If you go mountain climbing, mountaineering, you, you do field work, magugulat ka na lang. Para, oh my god, bakit may dugo yung medyas ko? <laughs> may something na malamig bigla, tapos makikita mo, eh, oh my god, my leech. How did it get there without you feeling it? When they bite you, they kind of release an anesthetic and also an anticoagulant so that the blood just keeps flowing and you don't feel a thing. When somebody has like an amputated organ and then they kind of put it back together. They use the leeches to make sure that the blood flow is somehow continuous and doesn't get stuck. Eh, ano naman, ang pake ko sa mga worms na to. They form the foundations of our different ecosystems. They're the ones that clean up shit. Patay na dahon, mga patay na hayop. They help reincorporate those nutrients back into the universe para mapakinabangan ng mga iba't ibang halaman at hayop pa ulit. Typical function in the food chain. They are either predators or prey. Errant polychaetes like nares, they're actually predators. Alam naman natin, yung mga earthworms, yung mahilig kumain ng earthworms, chicken, lahat yan magkakaugnay. Ang lahat na bagay ay magkaugnay. We are finally done with all the squishy phyla. If you want to know more about worms in general and all of the different phyla, just go ahead and explore the world and I'll leave you with a few videos right here that you can watch. I will see you in the next one.